Hello beautiful beings, this is Maruma 2 and you are watching Sun Soul Astrology and this is the Jupiter Retrograde Transit video and this is also Jupiter translating into the law of attraction. So this is going to be a really great time and I'm really excited that we're here because man, we could use some blessings right about now, right? So not all retrograde planets um, transits are a bad thing and some of them are a really good thing and so Jupiter is definitely that good one. It's like the cream of the crop. And now, because this Jupiter retrograde is happening in Libra, which is already a sign about beauty and, you know, relationships, art, music, it's, it's an awesome sign to have a Jupiter retrograde. And then we're also going to have, um, well, actually right now, because Jupiter is already stationed to go retrograde at 23 degrees and eight minutes of Libra, we're conjunct a fixed star that's in the constellation of Virgo called Spica. And Spica. <laughs> and it's at 24 degrees and four minutes, okay? So the reason that this fixed star um, happening with this station to go retrograde is so important is because Spica is the only star out there that is like itself. It's totally, totally unique. You know what I mean? It's unapologetically itself. And it's very reminiscent of a combination of Venus and Mars in one, okay? And like what, aren't those the lovers of the Zodiac? You know what I mean? Don't they represent, you know, on a higher level, the divine feminine and the divine masculine? You know, the goddess of love and the, the you know, king of war, <laughs> you know? I'm a Scorpio sun. I had to throw that in there. <laughs> but no, you know what I mean? It's really amazing because it's both male and female in one. It's like that androgynous type of vibration. And so with Jupiter going retrograde here, with all the aspects that I just told you about Libra, it's really going to be intense because Jupiter himself, right? Jupiter himself naturally rules the sign of Sagittarius, which is home of the galactic center, right? which is all of the higher wisdom and higher knowledge and it's it's the keeper of the jewels of the zodiac i mean our minds in our flesh suits literally can't even comprehend the sign of sagittarius you know let alone its planetary ruler jupiter but jupiter is all about blessings so whenever jupiter goes retrograde he brings everything that's considered to be jewels and pulls them inside to be rediscovered. You know, Jupiter is very much the, the philosopher and the scientist, right? But we're going quantum, so we're going quantum physics, you know what I mean? He's like Albert Einstein and Tesla and every great, you know, throughout all time, Leonard Susskind, Stephen Hawkins, you know, that's Jupiter. So he's gonna be bringing us that type of information and we're gonna go quantum on this Jupiter retrograde. We're not gonna go freaking textbook like F that, you know what I mean? We're so over that. So let me let you know, okay, Jupiter officially goes retrograde on February 6th. So we're right around the corner from that. And so it's still gonna be at 23 degrees. Um, and basically June 9th, Jupiter will be back in Libra, well, he'll stay in Libra, but we'll go all the way back to 13 degrees, okay? Now, um, it's really important to think about what is important to you right now, okay? Because you gotta align properly for this one. Because I've talked about this in my daily videos that if you're aligned properly, you're going to get such blessings from this. And when I talk about being aligned properly, I'm talking about where is your intent and where is your heart vibration? You know, because you have to be doing what you're doing for the progression of the entire collective, you know? And we all have jewels that we need to be bringing out right about now. So what Jupiter retrograde is gonna do is help you to really bird these into a new vibration 
of self, okay? Because self is the collective, because we're talking about a oneness, okay? We are each our identifiable frequency, vibrational signatures, but we're radiating within the whole, okay? So we're all together in this. And this Jupiter retrograde is going to make us really take quantum leaps into the future. We're really going to be moving, you know? So um, whenever it comes back to the 13 degrees of Libra, it's going to conjunct another star. And that star is not so nice. It's not like Spica, you know what I mean? Um, it's El Gorba. Okay, it's at 13 degrees and 41 minutes, and that is where judgment is going to get kicked, okay? Like, kicked out and kicked big. Because you know what I mean? Like, Spica wants to give artistic skills and musical talents and, you know, a good sense of humor, basically, and also bring the science to the minds that don't already have it, and um, literature, things like that. So, very Jupiter-esque. Um, so it's like a double dose of Jupiter sauce spread all over us. And I'm really excited for that. Like, I love Jupiter sauce, you know what I mean? But in understanding what is important to you and aligning internally where Jupiter is going to be doing this work is going to further align you with Spica and the blessings that come from Spica. And, you know, we're really trying on a soul level, each individual is really trying to realign with their own divine feminine and divine masculine. And it's the same because, you know, it's all, not just all of us are one, but it is all one energy, you know, male, female. And so it's overcoming the paradigm, you know what I mean, of, oh, he's a man and she's a girl. You know what I mean? This is coming into gender unity. You know, and acceptance for all those that have different ideas about, um, say, their sexual orientation. Because you know what? Whenever you go quantum, you go into other realms. You know what I mean? When you're authentically yourself, you're unapologetic about it. So you just are who you are. You know what I mean? And we've been fighting against this particular topic for way too freaking long. You know what I mean? So we're going to move into a different place. And it's going to be a higher place, okay? These are qualities, you know what I mean? Big time qualities that are all within the spiritual quantum realm. And they're all going to turn everything from the outside inward, okay? I, I know I said this, but I'm going to keep reminding you because the thing is, is that we are birthing this new world from inside, Okay, so this is why I've been really yelling about making sure that your vibration is in the proper space because when you are vibrating with negativity, you're down pressing the whole collective, right? So when you're radiating and you're uplifted and you're really doing what you're supposed to be doing, then you're not taking any of this crap personally and you're adding to the light. You're becoming that beacon, you know, that lighthouse that's shining the way for people to come home to. You know, and that's what it's really, really, really um, going to be judged on is how pure is your intent? How pure is your heart? You know, what is it that you're trying to acquire these material things for? Because if you keep it on the outside of trying to acquire material wealth and material possessions and things like that, that's whenever... Um, Al Gorab, you know what I mean? I have no idea if I'm saying it right. Um, yeah, Al Gorab. But my point, Al Gorab is going to be regulating on some people. You know what I mean? He's going to be all DMX like, whoa, 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 up in your face. You know what I mean? He's going to be like, what'd you do? You know, he ain't going to be playing no games. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, I mean, we're going to be taking quantum leaps into living our dreams. You know, like I said, this is Jupiter becoming the actual law of attraction, okay? So again, it's not just your thoughts. It is not your thoughts damn near at all. You know what I mean? They've told us a whole fucking lot that it is. And you know what? No, it's your vibration. It's your feelings. It's your emotions. Those are what create matter. And there is so much freaking scientific proof to prove that. You know what I mean? Definitely your thoughts have to be maintained, but it really doesn't matter if you want a better life. You know what I mean? If you feel 
like it's never going to happen on an emotional basis, then that's what's going to manifest, you know? And that's why I really give those tools to make sure that you could rewrite that subconscious program so that your default comes to be an understanding that yes, it will happen. And yes, you do deserve it. And that's why, you know, Jupiter ruling the, the quantum physics, right? The, the, the science, the scientist of the Zodiac, right? The one who powerfully and mercilessly seeks out the higher wisdom, okay? Because I mean, honestly, I don't want to be rude, but I just can never imagine a life where I never ask the higher questions. I mean, this is like why I breathe, you know what I mean? Is to discover what, how, who, when, where, why, you know what I mean? Like, it's an obsession to learn from me. I know not everybody is the same, but shit, to even ponder the damn question is what I'm pretty much talking about here, right? Because Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, okay? So, um, what I really wanted to get into with this is, you know, we're going to go over the houses in which this is going to transit for you. It's going to apply to your sun, moon, and your rising sign. And always just a heads up that whenever we're doing this, you know, all astrologers, when they do these transit videos, they're counting um, your sun sign as the first house, okay? So, your rising sign is actually what is going to tell you exactly what house it's transiting, okay? And then your moon, um, that's uh, more of an energy that you're going to feel from the description of the transit, okay? So, it is a little confusing, and I put that in there because I always wanted to know when I first got into astrology, and nobody ever says that, <laughs> So, um, yeah, if you want to know exactly what house is being transited, make sure you listen to your rising sign. But um, the energies coming from the sun and from the moon are going to be what you are what you are resonating with. Okay, you know your sun is the ego identification, the I am that I am, the authenticity of self, who you've defined you to be. And your moon is how you emotionally feel and how you emotionally react and respond um, and vibrate, right? It's your vibes. So, and then your rising sign is how the world is really perceiving you. You know, that light that shines from you, you know, whenever they take a guess at, um, trying to pin you down, <laughs> you know, and put you into a category. That's your rising sign. So, yeah, just keep in note that whenever I go through these transits, it's going to be all about, you know, the inner work in the quantum realm, because we're going freaking awesome with this, right? We're going super duper duper quantum. And, you know, we're taking all of the aspects because again, you know what I mean? The galactic center projects this 3D hologram. It is the pixelated data that creates this matrix, right? And so Jupiter rules it. So this is like tax return time, <laughs> except for it's on the galactic level, right? And if you didn't work and you didn't do a good job, you're not going to give much taxes back, right? So for all the spiritual warriors and warrioresses out there, you know what I mean? We fucking paid taxes this year, right? Jupiter is here to give us our refunds, okay? The law of attraction in action, you know? And some of us must have done some extra good job for Spica to be involved. <laughs> Spica. Uh, Pikachu. I do not watch Pikachu. Uh, I think I might hear it too much from the roomie playing it, whatever. But, um... <laughs> It's so, so literal, literal, literal. Um, now, I just want to tell anybody who out there who has sun conjunct speaker uh, in your natal chart, it's a really big indicator of immense wealth and great happiness. So <laughs> big up you. That would be anyone who has sun at 24 degrees of Libra. I'm jelly. <laughs> so, okay. Um, you know, as we go through this transit... We're going to have a lot going on. So it will officially end um, November 11th, okay? And that's whenever I was talking about that it's going to be at 13 degrees with the harsh regulator of um, Al Gorab. <laughs> it's just a name, just the way it sounds, Al Gorab. 
I don't want to talk to Al Gorab, so I'm going to do my best, and I'm going to be a good girl, and I'm going to get Jupiter benefic okay? Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to talk to Al Gorab. <laughs> All right, so uh, let me talk about this real quick as well. Um, hmm. Yeah, let me talk about this as well. Uh, basically, the conjunction of Spica with... Um, Jupiter, it's it's gonna bring you know, uh, how do I say? Hmm. Great happiness. I mean, I really can't say it any other way. Um, also, love, success, and wealth. You know, if we want to be three D about it, but uh, it's going to bring your psychic awareness and your spiritual growth together. You know what I mean? So, if you've really been on this path of enlightening yourself to new ways of consciousness, you know, the psychic abilities are really going to kick into high gear. And also, just a heads up, if you have Jupiter retrograde in your natal planet, it signifies that you have the ultimate ability to have 100% open consciousness, spiritual awakening, attunement, and mastery of spiritual lifetimes in this particular incarnation. So, you know what I mean? Um, those of you that do have that Jupiter retrograde in your natal chart, and I mean, damn, what if you actually have it at this 23, 24 degrees of Libra? Like, you're about to, like, revolutionize the spiritual movement, right? It's going to be like, we're all washing your feet. Like, damn, that would be freaking epic. Please, if you have it, <laughs> shout out, hook up, be my friend. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, this is where this is where it's like wild card central as well. You know what I mean? Where the poorest of the poor could become just like the wealthiest of the wealthy. And then on the opposite, you know what I mean? Because a homie star at the end of this situation, the richest of rich. Uh, I'm not going to even whisper the name, but you know who I'm talking about. You all read minds out there. You all know. So let's just, you know. Let's just Jedi mind trick. We know who I'm talking about. Um, yeah, the wealthiest of the wealthy mm -hmm. can become the poorest of the poor. Like, don't play with Al Gorab. All right, don't play with Al Gorab. He's going to regulate. I really like that. <laughs> Starting to get attached to him already. And yeah, I'm pretty sure it's him. Uh, for that type of whoop ass to come out, he's gonna have to uh, have to like go ninja style on some people in this world, and that's gonna be a really great thing because again, wildcard central. And you know what? I live in Las Vegas, and yeah, it's random, but at the same time, it's such an epic spot because that is exactly the manifestation type of energy that's flowing through here. You know what I mean? You can come here dead ass broke. You know what I mean? You could put fifty cents in a jackpot and like win. Especially if it's a progressive, you know what I mean? Y'all been to Vegas, you know what I'm talking about with the progressives. <laughs> but max bet, do not cheat yourself because the, the, the only time that you don't put in your max bet, that's when you're going to actually win that jackpot. Happened to my sister the other day. <laughs> she won 60 bucks instead of like 6,000. Like, boo, you know what I mean? Don't play around with those things. But while this transit is occurring, okay, we're going to have Jupiter oppose Uranus. And that's going to be all about our personal freedom and our authenticity. And so you already, you, you guys already know so much about this because I keep talking about it on such an intense level. Um, it's basically going to be the creation of a new world through your own eyes, right? Because you know, Uranus is the quantum realm, the quantum evolution, and then Jupiter is the, fil you know, damn, I keep talking about Jupiter. I'm not gonna say it again. So this is basically, you know, all of that. You know what I mean? Taking yourself, you know, your wisdom, your knowledge, your quest for greatness, and really just putting it out there. You know, it's a new world for you because you're not looking through the same filter that you once did. You know what I mean? Go ahead and create your own words. You know what I mean? Don't don't get secluded to word boxes. I love making up new words. You know, I, I play Destiny and I let you guys know this, but uh, the, you know, the enemies in the game, I call them seeing enemies. <laughs> and it's just so much better because then they're not so um, enemy-ish. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're seeing enemy-ish. <laughs> So, um, 
yeah just one more note about that that's when you're going to bust into the quantum realm you know what i mean the the jupiter opposed uranus and then jupiter is going to be sextiling saturn and it's going to be um taking all of your knowledge you know all of your grounded earth energy and finalize what opportunity opportunities are real to you you know what i mean like if you're in this finalization stage, you know what I mean? Because I know a lot of people are at crossroads. And it's kind of that crossroads between 3D and quantum. And so they're making sure because, you know, these dreams that we have of understanding who we really are and what we really need to do, they're really big, like I keep talking about. And so this is you finalizing yourself, you know, with you to make this tangible and real in the 3d matrix okay because that's sextiling saturn again right and we've been knowing this um saturn shining uranus is going to keep you in a quantum realm for a very long time so you'll step into your true quantum self and you'll make it real and that's going to be such a huge thing you know such a huge thing you know saturn shining uranus is freaking epic right so do not hold yourself back you know what i mean jump on that quantum train and just blast into the universe it's going to be such an amazing time i can't keep saying that because i'm so excited and then just so you know again um i know i already said it but just to reiterate uh jupiter is going to conjunct al gorab <laughs> on june 9th okay whenever he stations to go direct okay and then we'll be back out of the shadow um and be fully moving forward with jupiter again november 11th okay so that's still going to be at 13 degrees so between june 9th and november 11th jupiter is going to be conjuncting al Gorab. okay so this judgment is probably um you know intuitionally big time what we do from now until November 11th is going to be very, very, very judged on consistency. Okay, so any test and any trials, any tribulations, tribulations that come up, you're going to really have to stay firm and grounded in who you are, you know, and all of the things that you know Jupiter wants you to expand on an internal level. Because if you're going for outer material accomplishments and you're not going for the inner spiritual wealth, you know, with Al Gore up there for so long, it's going to be some brutal stuff. You know what I mean? And again, you know, Jupiter is a visionary explorer. So we need to explore our own inner worlds with that visionary and, you know, seeker mentality. You know, true seekers really, really, really investigate everything. And so now it's like you're your own personal project. This is get to know yourself central and really take all of it and look at it from a bigger picture you know from that outside perspective that i've talked about a million times also you know so this is you know where we keep an open mind where we delete old beliefs especially beliefs that do not serve us you know what i mean the only belief that we should really be having is the belief that we always want to do better be better learn more you know what i mean experience more but just really not letting ourselves be constrained by any sort of boundaries or borders you know what i mean and that's why um jupiter and saturn have beef is because saturn wants to control and jupiter's like no -uh. like i don't want none of that so yeah it's an interesting thing but it's all philosophical we're going to be having some really deep conversations and hopefully predominantly with ourselves you know get out of those belief boxes you know <laughs> Just make it happen. <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> All right. So let's get into this transit. Okay. We're going to go quantum, as I mentioned. Um, you know what I mean? Because Jupiter is really all about playing a role. You know what I mean? In order to achieve acceptance but or approval. And that's not how I personally see Jupiter. That's more of like a textbook version. Because yes, this is all a world stage, and so we are all playing roles. And yes, we all are, are you know, trying to gain acceptance. But this is about when you kick in the authenticity of being in your role. You're not playing it, you know, anymore as a false mask. You are 
resonating in the realness of it. You know what I mean? So, okay, let's get into this, all right? Aries, this is going to be in your seventh house. And traditionally, they talk about the seventh house as relationships. But this is quantum unions. Okay, so that's really interesting when we take it quantum, isn't it? Because now we're talking about twin flames and we're talking about divine partnerships. And we're talking about soulmate unions. But whenever we talk about it in a quantum, we're not talking that it has to be in the physical 3D. So, excuse me. The seventh house also marks the descendant of the chart, talking about your perfect partnership. So Jupiter represents the husband. So you might definitely spiritually get married this time around. You know what I mean, Aries? And especially if you do have that actual, you know, 3D partner that is real, a real boy, you know, um, then you definitely are going to be getting into each other's um, souls a lot easier. You know, this is like tantric style but discovering universes through that union you know and whenever you go into the meditations of jupiter really understanding that your divine partner is that spiritual marriage you know it's not it doesn't have to be here and man it's sometimes easier when it's not because we get so caught up in the flesh of you know sometimes arguing and fighting and all that other stuff and there's no more time to have 3d relationships so whenever we're going jupiter retrograde and libra quantum style in the seventh house we're talking about quantum unions you know so especially if maybe you haven't had any thoughts that maybe that's what's really going on maybe these are you know this repetitive dream that i keep having about this partner is really who I'm with, but just in the quantum realm and not on the 3D, right? Because your blessings and your gifts are going to come from cultivating this divine love, okay, that we would normally refer to as in partnerships. But, you know, a speaker there representing the male and the female and the integration of the divine feminine and the divine masculine, I think that on a really serious quantum astrology perspective, that this is how we should really be looking at um, Aries, you know, for you, again, Aries Suns happening in your seventh house, which was normally Libra. Exactly where Jupiter is retrograding. So, Taurus, this is happening in your sixth house, okay? We normally call the sixth house health. Um, okay, I call it quantum biology, okay? Whenever Jupiter retrograde is happening in your sixth house for Taurus, you know what I mean? You're tapping it into the biology, okay? Which is AKA health on a 3D term, right? Because now we're getting into epigenetics. And if we're talking about Jupiter, the benefic, and the scientist, and the discoverer, you're going inside and you're using that sixth house energy of daily routine to speak to your cells on a cellular level. You are actually repairing your DNA on a daily basis. You are actually reversing your age. You are reversing any sort of health issues that you have. You are quantumly, spontaneously healing any diseases and disorders that you have because we're not talking about 3D blah, blah health. Man, I do not like textbook stuff. You know, can you tell? I'm like, no, I can't. I won't. I won't. So um, going quantum with it is going straight quantum biology and quantum epigenetics okay like really get into epigenetics this is your daily routine and this is where jupiter is really going to bless you on a huge level if you're doing that work you know and again you know let's go let's go 3d for a second let's go textbook virgo is cleanliness is next to godliness and i talk virgo because it rules the sixth house okay so the sixth house is that energy right but taurus taurus you got to get into that routine you know what I mean? you got to get into that health regimen, but it's got to also come from the outside too because, you know, sometimes Taurus is not that detail-oriented. They are not that clean and good-smelling, just saying. Um, so this is where you get really clean, you get really fresh, and you get really, really deep on a biology quantum cellular level and you start to reconnect your connective tissue you start to regenerate your bone mass 
You know what I mean? You start to expand your muscles. I mean, even if, I mean, man, this is literally like quantum. This is where you could literally sit on the couch for an hour a day and think about going to the gym and doing a full workout and actually manifest that body. You know what I mean? Just saying. All right, Gemini, this is in your fifth house of creativity and love, but we're going quantum. So this is quantum expression. And so how do you quantumly express yourself? How do you bring um, the creativity, art, and music to the quantum realm? You know what I mean? And we're talking about love. So this is the heart center, okay? How do you use your higher heart on a daily basis? And Gemini, I mean, shite. You are the 180th Sagittarius, right? So your opposite sign is the, you know, the ruler of your opposite sign is the one who's retrograding, Jupiter, right? So you have an uncanny ability to tap into this multidimensional um, multiverse a lot easier than many people and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. Gem Gemini, you stop selling yourself short. You stop it right now. You are one of the most quantum beings in this universe and you're thinking you're all normal. You think you're all just ruled by Mercury. Mercury runs this bitch, you know what I mean? Mercury, Hermes, Thoth, Quetzalcoatl. You know what I mean? Legit, if it wasn't for Thoth, you know what I mean? Who's related to Mercury, there would be nothing. Okay, there wouldn't even be Sagittarius because Sagittarius and the Galactic Center all had to be manufactured and programmed to project this reality. Think about that, Gemini. Think about that. That's quantum as fuck. You know what I mean? You are. And the suppression is that you, you think you're just like, oh, let's have some fun and like talk to everybody and be all innocent and unicornish. You know what I mean? Stop being a unicorn. All right, go quantum quantifiably be a magical epic unicorn like there's really any other kind right so realize that you know gemini's are such unicorns so realize that unicorns are magical okay so yes quantum expression our souls sing our vibrations okay you can literally sing quantumly to the entire universe and lift up the consciousness whenever you go into mantras and chants you know what i mean because we're talking about how to express this quantum expression of creativity and love. You know what I mean? You can go into the quantum realm and paint the most beautiful universes you've ever seen. You know what I mean? The most happy little trees, you know? Put a little happy leaf here, and a little happy pond over here. You know, but do that for the collective, because I mean, man, we're not really talking about personal stuff you know what i mean of course this is all incredibly personal but we're realizing as we've progressed that we are the whole again right so we are going quantum cancer this is happening in your fourth house which is your fourth house <laughs> Cancer rules the fourth house so you know this quite well and we're not going to say that it's home know what i mean yeah, that's boring again. Yeah, it's super 3D again, okay? Cancer, fourth house, okay, is your quantum intuition. You know what I mean? Because cancer, yes, I mean, cancer carries its home on its back. We know this, okay? It sucks itself into its little shell when its feelers get hurt, but it's because they can feel the intuition of everything. You know what I mean? When a cancer retraction to its shell, it's because it's feeling too much. And like intuition, empathy, emotions, it's all tapped in, right? So this is your happening in your quantum intuition, okay? So cancers can really pick out the jewels. You know what I mean? They're really good at discerning. They're really good at protecting. And so we can all learn a bit from that cancer energy whenever it comes to making sure that we're not involving ourselves in needless actions, okay? And I mean, cancer doesn't need to come any more home. I mean, shit, cancer is home, right? So go quantum. Where's your quantum home? And we're talking about Jupiter. So this is whenever you start to discover what planet are you from? What star system are you from? 
Like, who are you on a quantum level? You know what I mean? You've been getting these indications. Whenever you want to set your intention for what you want to find out, Cancer, you want to know where the hell you're from. And let's talk about this. It's the star system Sirius. Sirius and Sirius B. I'm from Sirius B. You know what I mean? It's located at 13, 14 degrees of Cancer. The reason I see that is because depending on when you were born, it was at 13 degrees and now it's progressed to 14. But it's a fixed star. Or it hangs out in one spot for a really, 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 really long time. All right. Star system serious. So, Cancers, you know what I mean? Check it out. See what personal planets you have. Any sun, um, moon rising at that degree of Cancer. Definitely an indication that you're from there. All right. So, also, you know, everybody, this is your indication, especially if you have, like, a Cancer moon, but you're a Capricorn sun, check it out and see where your moon is, okay? Like, what the degrees are, because there's plenty of amazing ways to discover where you're at, um, where you're from in astrology, and so whenever we're talking about quantumly going home and in quantum intuition, this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about anything that's really relevant to this realm, okay? Because again, Jupiter retrograde isn't talking about outward expression. It's talking about inside benefics, okay? So Leo, this is happening in your third house, and this is your quantum connection, okay? Normally known as communication. But now we're going into quantum communication and quantum connection, Okay, so this is where you're holding space. This is where you are here, a part of this world, but you are going into the quantum realm and making those connections through pure heart and pure intent. Okay, you're moving through the etheric realm, aka the quantum realm, you know what I mean? You're making connections on a soul level. Okay, whenever you're going into your meditations and communications they're happening on the higher consciousness levels they're they're happening you know on the, the the universal cosmic radio stations you know what i mean so you're spending more time going inside so that you can hear this universal communication so that you can literally tell the rest of us what you're hearing what you're experiencing whenever it comes to that connection and it's a really great thing because leo um there's so much beautiful light that you shine, you know, so much beautiful light that you shine. So it's really like you're a great ambassador to go into those higher consciousness levels and make those connections. All right, Virgo, this is happening in your second house of quantum wealth, okay, aka money on the 3D, you know what I mean? But at the same time, the second house is all about self-worth, right? So we're talking about quantum wealth, okay? Whenever you get to this place of wholeness and authenticity and um, stability, you have created this spiritual and quantum wealth, okay? And so I really think that it's an amazing thing because this is also going to manifest, you know, for you in particular, truly um, on the external value of actual like De Niro, um, Rands, if you ask me, and you know, South Africa. Um, but this is really going to be tangible. You know what I mean? Virgo, what you do now is really going to be important. Cultivate that spiritual wealth. Cultivate that self-worth. And you are going to be so blessed, it's not even going to be funny. Okay? Libra, this is happening in your first house. You know, generally known as personality, but this is your quantum self. Okay, this is your higher light level bodies. This is where you raise up to another octave. And man, because this is happening in your sign, you just have like all of this amazingness. I mean, really like it's going to be just a combination of every um, house all dosed on top of you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Jupiter's going to be dosing you with acid drops this time. <laughs> and I mean, you're really, you know gonna step into the fullness of who you are but on such a higher level because you're gonna realize that it was never about this anyways it was always about something bigger and something grander you know what you always had a hard time identifying who you were because you couldn't relate to the confined like the little the little humanness that our flesh suits look like we are the only thing that made sense was something so grand and extra dimensional and quantum that now you're like fuck yeah like, this totally makes more sense for my own identification of my quantum personality. 
I don't need to be 3D. I need to really step into my soul's mission. You know what I mean? It's going to be a really great time, Libra, because you're really getting some extra goodies, you know, some really serious extra goodies, especially because, you know, you're a ruler. Venus just reincarnated. And so this is a quantum reincarnation of you. You know what I mean? Big up, Libra. I'm really happy for this transit for you because you've been having a tough time, especially with Jupiter being in your sign and squaring Pluto for all that time. But, you know, Pluto destroyed who you were so that you could become this amazing, abundant quantum self. And I'm so happy. Oh my gosh, I want to cry. I'm so happy for you, Libra. I fucking love you. I know the world is going to love you so much more now. I mean, everybody already does love themselves a, li love themselves a Libra, but it's going to be a different different version a different you i'm so excited okay scorpio <laughs> hey i'm a scorpio so um i'm excited about this it's in the 12th house okay which is you know mysticism but it's a quantum spirit you know and scorpio is already so um you know, attuned to seeing through the veil and really being the investigator into the truth that they, they see in people, right? So whenever we're going into the quantum spirit, we're taking it all the way, you know, and we're moving into where we see, um, you know, not the binary code like in the matrix, but we see the web of light, you know what I mean? And then we see all the places in between it and we can really get into the truth. You know, we can really be the ones that are um, discerning exactly what creation is and how it applies to us. You know what I mean? And um, I think that that's a huge task for Scorpio, right? Because Scorpio naturally rules the eighth house. And so it's known as the house of death and rebirth. So it's like the spiritual reincarnation as well. Okay, so this is a huge thing. Huge, huge, huge thing. Because it's very similar to what Pisces is going to experience the transit as as well. And we're going to get to that. But Scorpio, you know, um, with this being in the 12th house, you know, your clarity on the quantum realm is going to actually bring clarity to the 3D world. You know what I mean? Because visionaries have to be able to see. You know, you have to take that visionary aspect of Jupiter and apply this, okay? So we can go in there and see the depths of truth you know and then bring light to it and not just bring light but bring healing because we're removing the judgments okay and i think that that's a huge thing that scorpio is quite capable of you know and connecting right connecting to source on a way that removes their judgments about self so that they can reconnect and they can um birth actual creator source through their energy vibrations, you know what I mean? Scorpio's definitely going to have a new perspective of the quantum creator within self's own creation and how their spirit connects on all levels, on all 12 levels, you know what I mean? It's a pretty epic one, and I'm not even going to go towards anything that um, having Scorpio in the 12th would do, you know what I mean? The, the transit in the 12th, you know, because it, it's going to only bring jewels of wisdom, you know, any last little pieces of the puzzle that weren't quite clear to you, you know, they're all going to become clear now. Very good point. All right, Sagittarius, this is actually happening in your 11th house in the quantum realm, all right? Normally known as the boring friendship house. I don't want to say friends are boring. I, I should take that back. But I mean, literally, it is a quantum realm. Let's get over the friendship house, okay? And yes, if you want to apply it to go quantum with your friends, then go ahead. I mean, you can make little meetup app dates and events and go quantum, okay? That's a really good use of the friendship aspect. But at the same time, I mean, coño, you know, Sagittarius is a galactic center, Aquarius is the quantum realm, the 11th house. You put the two together, and I mean, can you even conceive of that? I mean, OMG, you know? 
like Sagittarius is already so wise and full of wisdom. And I mean, they're ruled by Jupiter. So this is your ruler going retrograde whenever he's talking about just dosing you with gifts and blessings, the actual law of attraction. And because you're the sign that projects this reality, I mean, shoot, you're so responsible for creating this matrix right now in the most amazing way. You just became like, um, stepping into your full power of who you really are on that literal quantum realm basis. So now, you know, you're projecting into the quantum realm that's just all these waves of possibilities and birthing new earths. Earths. <laughs> so I'm excited. And actually, I realized that I forgot to read the degrees for where Jupiter's going to be and when. And so I'm going to have to go back and do that. Boo. Okay. So Capricorn, this is happening in your 10th house. Isn't that funny? Um, this is your quantum life path. You know what I mean? The North Node is definitely about the direction you need to head in life. But Capricorn, um, the 10th house is all about career, right? So your quantum life path, where is it going to lead you in and into what career? If you're living your quantum life path, then you're not questioning what your career is. And so this is really a time to go inside and do the Jupiter investigations to make sure that you're aligned, okay? Because, you know, if you want to be a real estate agent and sell mansions, you know, useless things to people that don't really need them, just so you can acquire financial wealth and buy the Rolex and have the car, like that's where Al Gorab is going to like whoop past you, okay? And it's funny because, you know, Cancer and Capricorn are having this in their own home signs, right? So um, there really can't be a clear perspective for either Cancer or Capricorn to know what this vibration is, but now they're tasked with taking it very, very, very much quantum. Because you know what, if you're out there and you're just like an attention whore, you know what I mean? I know some Capricorns out there who just want everybody to look at them, you know, and not all of them, I'm not saying all of them, but they're so determined on their career path that they want all of the acknowledgement from everyone in the world, you know, and that's not what it's about. You know what I mean? We all have to get through this life without looking for anyone to validate ourselves from the outside. So whenever you take this and you go quantum into your life path, you're so fulfilled by doing what you're really here to do on a soul level that you could give two shits about getting um, a good job, a pat on the back, a freaking like on your Instagram, a freaking heart. You know what I mean? Like 20,000 comments. Nobody needs to tell you anything about you, Capricorn. You need to go quantum and make your life path, your soul. You know what I mean? Cancer and Capricorn are so spiritually connected to everything. You know what I mean? And Cap Cap Capricorn is tasked with seeing through the illusion of this matrix that they think they create. You know, so they need to go quantum. Capricorn, really go fucking quantum onto your life path and far exceed the 3D, especially this is Jupiter's law of attraction blessing time. So you're either gonna have the red carpet ruled out for you because you went into the true aspects of source creation of self, or Al Gorab is again gonna whoop ass you, you know what I mean? And take all of what you already had before any of this ever started straight out from under you. Your red carpet with roses spread upon it is going to get ripped the fuck out from underneath you. And sorry, apparently there's some Capricorns out there watching that I really needed to channel that that way for because <laughs> it killed me. Um, Aquarius, this is happening in your ninth house of quantum knowledge. Like, what? Aquarius and Sagittarius, they're doing some role reversals. And I really love that because, damn, um... We need to have that happen, right? We need Aquarius to be vibing on that quantum um, Sagittarius and vice versa, okay? So Aquarius, quantum knowledge, because we're talking about the ninth house of wisdom, okay, where Jupiter naturally rules. And so both of you, I, it's a very much a similar um, vibration, very much a similar translation because when we're going into quantum knowledge, you know, you're really seeking out your own quantum biology. You're really understanding that you are a quantum computer, 
You know what I mean? You're understanding the, the aspects that were always invisible to you before. You know, and these jewels, you know what I mean? If you unlock and understand all of this, you no longer have medical bills. You know what I mean? Because you have the tools to heal yourself. You no longer have um, therapy bills because you have worked out the understanding of the universe to where you fix your fucking mind. You know what I mean? Um, it's a literal all-encompassing quantum wisdom. Okay? Quantum philosophy. I talk about this so much. So Aquarius, this is where you are discovering this. You are really discovering this. And then whenever Jupiter is done with the retrograde and comes forward, then you can literally like build a new quantum computer in the physical, right? And Jupiter will bless you to where he funds that project for you. You know what I mean? We're talking about multidimensional stuff. We're not talking about 3D. So if this hasn't hit you correctly, it's because you're too 3D and you should go listen to somebody that talks just about you, okay? Because this isn't about the one anymore, okay? We're talking about the humanitarian aspect with the sun in Aquarius, right? We're talking about the collective. So go ahead and hit the dislike button if you don't want, if you didn't like me talking not about you. Um, again, somebody must be out there that needed that one. <laughs> Kill me again. All right, Pisces. This is in your eighth house. You know, the bow chicka bow wow. But this is quantum rebirth. You know, Pisces and Pisces. Pisces needs to be rebirthed. You know what I mean? Because Pisces is always in the quantum spirit realm. You know what I mean? Always in that 12th house energy of source creator. And so Pisces really needs to incarnate. You know what I mean? Pisces going quantum is actually like coming down to earth and being like, what's up, everybody? Like, I've been chilling with freaking God like this whole time. I didn't realize that you all were here. That's why I was, you know, sleeping. <laughs> and I love, I love, I love me some um, balanced Pisces. I really do. You know what I mean? And so with this in the eighth house, which is normally Scorpio, it's, it's going to rebirth you. You know, and again, we're talking about the house that has three totems, you know, because it all connects. It all is layers of cake that we spread on top of each other. And of course, Pisces would be able to walk through the door, okay, the quantum door in the eighth house and walk into this world because the eighth house is that step, that bridge. It goes between the physical and into the spiritual. So, you know, unlike the rest of the chart, Pisces is coming from the other direction. It's coming from the 12th house through into the eighth. You know, and this is where we also talk about, you know, the, you know, you know, the sex, of course, but also, you know, your marriage and things like that, whenever you want to get really 3D. Um, so we'll have to see what happens to that. Like, I really don't even want to bring that into it because the thing is, is we're talking once again about Jupiter and about jewels of wisdom and how it relates to the grander scale of everything. You know what I mean? So if we're caught up thinking about if we're going to get married or if we're going to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or like when is it going to happen? We're missing the point. We are missing the point completely. We're supposed to be in love with ourselves, in a relationship with ourselves, married to ourselves. You know what I mean? You're not supposed to feel lonely because you know that on a grand scale, you are never alone. You know what I mean? So, in, it, like, Jupiter is going to bring so many inspirational aspects to your life that you're going to be so busy traveling your own universes that nothing outside of you is appealing. You know what I mean? Like, cultivate all this as we go through this transit so that you can really manifest in actual physical form everything that you've been wishing for. You know? And that's when you can start to focus on those things. But meanwhile, in the meantime, in between time, if there's anything in your world that's disrupting um, your vibration, your pure heart, your pure intent, and your drive to go into that quantum realm, you know, into, like I said, this isn't just a Jupiter retrograde. You know, this is a Jupiter retrograde conjunct the most benefic star in the sky. Again, representing the masculine and the feminine, okay? In one, the oneness unity, it's conjuncted. Literal 
literal law of attraction manifested. But if you can't fix this pure heart and pure intent and resonate and create from a pure literal belief in yourself vibration, then nothing in this outer world will ever look the way that you want it to. And that's what Jupiter is here to do. Okay, because he's definitely like Santa Claus. You know, he's writing a list and he's checking it twice. And then whenever he gets done, you know, Ebenezer Scrooge is Al Gore at, right? <laughs> so he's going to hand that list of all y'all that have been naughty and didn't do your work and didn't stay in the correct vibration and added to the shit of the matrix, okay, in your fucked up vibration. He's going to hand that to Al Gore at. And then Al Gorab's going to come and knock on your fucking door and strip everything. He's going to be like the repo man, okay? Don't let Al Gorab repo you. <laughs> like, really do the work because this is going to be an amazing time and I'm so excited. And, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and read the degrees that I forgot to read earlier. Okay, 23 degrees of Libra. A tremendous boulder hovering over the ocean. Collective cycles are everything here. You are caught between worlds, part of many belonging to none. Changes are imminent. The air is buzzing with future currents. No rest, no quiet, no continuity. You verge on outstanding things, held poised at the edge. You feel propelled by destiny to obsess upon where we all are now, where we come from, and especially where we are going gathering impressions towards the harvest, staying tuned for future developments, and knowing it's going to come at any moment now. I can feel it rising up. Pray to me, absorb my life, let me illuminate you, close your eyes, can you hear my voice whisper?